butterflies are some of the most beautiful and noticeable of our insects here in Zimbabwe. Everyone loves the sight of flowers in the garden teeming with butterflies of every size, shape and colour. We could watch them for hours on end, daintily fluttering around from one flower to the next, dipping their proboscis into each and every tube to get a sweet sip of nectar. We're all familiar with this sight. But this is just the adult butterflies. It's only the final stage of the life cycle of these incredible creatures. Very few people know much about the earlier stages in the life cycle of a butterfly, or about how absolutely dependent those earlier stages are on specific indigenous plants and habitats. Understandably, it is the destruction of those plants and habitats that is the single greatest threat to butterfly populations today. Every butterfly starts its life as a tiny little egg, often less than half a millimeter in diameter. These eggs are laid on the leaves or stems of their specific larval food plant. Larva is another word for caterpillar, so the larval food plant is the plant that the caterpillars eat. Adult butterflies can drink nectar from many different types of flowers, but the caterpillars are incredibly fussy about what plants they eat the leaves of. Each species of butterfly has only one plant or a couple of similar indigenous plants that their leaves larvae can feed on. And incredibly, the female butterflies can somehow smell or detect what those plants are, so they only lay their eggs where they'll be able to find food to eat once they have hatched. The very first meal that these tiny caterpillars have after they've hatched is their own eggshell. They actually eat the eggshell. After that, they just eat the leaves of the plant that they're on, which is hopefully the right food plant. There are a couple of species where the caterpillars are predatory and feed on mealybugs or some other sort of scale insects, but most of them just eat leaves. Caterpillars are a bit like reptiles in that they grow on the inside, but their skin doesn't grow, so they have to shed their skin every so often. This is called molting, and the stages after each molt are called instars. After about five molts, the caterpillar has increased in mass over 200 times. It spins a web-like pad on a branch and inserts a hook into the end, from the end of its abdomen into the silken pad. Some families like the Papillionidae or the swallowtails also make a girdle around what we might call their waist. Then they shed their skin one last time, leaving the pupal case inside. This starts very soft, but then hardens into a firm protective layer around the pupa. About three weeks and lots of internal rearranging later, out comes a butterfly. Fluid is pumped into its veins to inflate the wings, and then the butterfly hangs for several hours while that fluid solidifies and its wings harden and strengthen. Finally, its wings are strong enough for it to fly away. Now I think we all agree this cycle of metamorphosis is an absolutely amazing process. But not many people realize how easily it is disrupted and halted altogether. One vital factor that must be present for butterflies to be able to complete their life cycle is an adequate supply of the right larval food plant. We said earlier that each species of butterfly needs its own specific food plant. Now in Zimbabwe we have 526 butterfly species and each of those requires its own larval food plants. Well, there are some overlaps, I'm sure you're starting to realize just how many different plant species are needed to feed all our different types of butterflies. Maintaining the biodiversity of our Zimbabwean flora is essential to the conservation of our magnif magnificent butterflies. Now of course, since each butterfly needs a different plant, the areas where we get the most different types of plants are going to be where we find lots and lots of different butterfly species. And it's on these areas that we need to concentrate our conservation efforts most. Churinda Forest is the largest area of medium altitude rainforest in Zimbabwe and is home to an amazing selection of rare butterflies. It even has one species, the Neocotons acriomimic, which is endemic to just this forest. Fortunately, Churinda Forest has some measure of protection under the Forestry Commission. Sadly, other important butterfly areas along the eastern highlands are facing grave futures with illegal woodcutting and clearing of land for small plots of maize.
producing the tree cover at an alarming rate. And if the trees go, so does the food available to butterfly larvae. The butterflies most threatened by this are those species whose larval food plant trees are only found in a small area or specific habitat. If their trees are destroyed, even if all the others are left standing, their larvae won't survive. It's as simple as that. Bunty Forest on Butler North in the Chitora Valley is the only home of Mylophilus carcassoni, which is the carcassonne's dotted border butterfly. Even this unique habitat is now under great pressure from wood cutting. Many other areas, including a great number of important butterfly habitats, are facing a similar demise. The pictures and video will speak for themselves. Witchwood Valley in the Lower Vumba, Essex Valley, Haroni Rusitu, Mount Yohurui in the Udzi, Ditchwe Forest near Mangura, the Iron Mask Range in Missouri, Mount Bukwa, Mount Mberengwa, Mount Igar, Mapembi. All these are areas with exceptional biodiversity of flora and fauna, including rare butterfly species. And all of them are also threatened to some extent by human activities. We need to act now and protect our national heritage of awesome Zimbabwean species before it's too late. I've been focusing on butterflies in this video, but while they do play vital roles in the ecosystems themselves, butterflies are also very important as indicator species. We notice butterflies easily, but we might not notice the other essential insects, microbes and larger vertebrates quite as quickly. If we concentrate on protecting the butterflies through looking after the indigenous plants that they rely on, we won't only be benefiting the Lepidoptera populations, that's butterflies and moths, but all the rest of the animal kingdom too. Other insects which rely on those trees will increase in numbers, providing more food for a greater bird and small mammal and reptile population, which in turn provides a greater source of prey for creatures further up the food chain. The entire ecosystem will benefit, including humans, even if we just have the initial aim of protecting our wonderful butterflies. It is time for the people, parks and leaders of Zimbabwe to stand united. Only together can we effectively and sustainably conserve our incredible natural surroundings for the benefit of both ourselves and many generations of Zimbabweans to come.